Thanks for joining the Dating with Katie podcast today. We're talking about men with erectile dysfunction, also known as ED. I get these DMs, I'm telling you, every third month, right? It's it's a pretty tender topic, and I usually only get them from women. Uh, and then I always take a poll of some sort to see where are we at on the ED issue again. And so today I'm going to read some of those polls to you. I'm going to talk a little bit about erectile dysfunction. I'll just say ED, a lot easier. And um, I'm going to give you some of my own reasons why I think it's happening uh, in this day and age. I'm going to tell you some averages, and I'm going to share with you what the ladies had to say about it. So you're going to want to stay tuned. And do me a huge favor. Will you hit that subscribe button? Will you give me five stars? That just really encourages me to keep moving. Send this this to another 20 percenter. You know how I feel about the quality people out there. Um, And we're all going through stuff in dating. It is not easy. I was out there for 10 years. I am happily married now. I have podcasts on how to get a good man, where are they at, uh, Are you? is she a gold digger? So I hope you've enjoyed my other podcasts as well. They're only 15 minutes long. What? That's 1% of your day. If you can invest 1% of your day into dating, I promise you I'm going to get you confident. I'm going to get you successful. And I'm hoping that you're going to have some fun dating because you're going to be dating like an adult. So thanks for joining again. All right. Well, I got um, a DM and I love it when you guys send me DMs. Send me emails, datingwithkatie at gmail.com about your dating issues. So I got this from a woman, um, and I'm not gonna say her name, but uh, this is what she said. She said, Katie, I just listened to your podcast about the three types of men that you dated. So let me reference that, that's podcast 38. It is the old guy, the rich guy, and the nice guy. Kind of some fun stories in there. Those were literally the first three men I dated after being divorced. Um, She said, you know, She said, I've currently found that the guy is all three of what you were speaking of. He's older, he's rich, and he's incredibly nice. Um, But I'm struggling with the fact that at nine years older than me, he looks even older than that. Okay, let's just take a time out here. First off, I believe in the 10-year gap. My husband is nine years older than me. Uh, And in this day and age, women are keeping themselves very well. So we are not aging because we are Botoxing, we are PRPing, we are doing our skin, and it's important because as we are getting older, we're, st- we're still looking amazing, and you you older men, and I'm going to say from 50 and on, this is what you always say to me, Katie, but I look and feel young, and honestly, I want to say back, you don't look young. You look old. Your skin looks weathered. Your deep wrinkles make you look old. Um, your teeth are bad. Whatever it is, you're, um, you've been out in the sun. We all have, but women are doing what needs to be done to to keep young. And even with my husband, I recognize that we need to get started on his skin, his brown spots, uh, maybe a little bit tightening here underneath his chin, the gobbler. Guys, get your gobbler fixed. There is no shame in the man game. I totally believe in Brotox. Um, I support it. I often post pictures about the differences in men when they actually go do it. Nobody will know if you get it done right. Now, if you look at some of the celebrities, they have done it wrong or they've gotten a full facelift and it doesn't look good. So guys, please, I implore you, take care of yourself. And I'm not saying creams and lotions. You're too far gone for that. Literally go invest in some PRP on your hairline, invest in fixing your, your third chin. It's not, it's not attractive to us. And these beautiful women are like, oh, I, I want to look at something nice too. So let, moving on, but much cuter with his baseball cap on. So interestingly enough, I wonder if he was hat fishing her. Have you heard that one where the guy wears a hat in, on all of his photos and uh, then he takes it off and he's bald. Um, he's much cuter with his baseball cap on, which he wears 95% of the time, probably because he's insecure. You got to own it. Guys, if you're bald, I love it when a bald guy owns it. He's bald. That's, you can't change it. He wears 90% of the time, but without it, definitely more aware of his age because he looks older. That's fine. But girl, you picked a bald guy. So, I mean, I've seen bald guys that look young. I mean, there's plenty of celebrity bald men that look good. Um, that's because their skin and their face looks good. It's not the baldness. And if you are bald, would you put a little bit of a tanning cream on your head? It just, it helps the glow. She says, when we get dressed up and he doesn't have it on, his baseball cap, people think he is substantially older uh, than I am because I also look very young. This is what we're talking about. She says, also his physicality when we're being intimate is different than guys who are young. He feels more stiff and having issues with ED. With the guy that was older, how did you decide when it was time to move on? 
right? Okay, so basically, he's having issues with ED. He feels more stiff. He's not as fit as a younger guy. Well, sweetheart, we, we exchange that out sometimes for a, a more quality man. Of course, you could find a younger guy with a better body. I mean, there's lots of older men with great bodies. and It goes reverse for women as well, or the same, right? It's not about their age. It's about how well they've kept themselves. So this man... One, he's not keeping himself that well uh, physically, so maybe inspire him. I mean, if you're super into fitness, get him into fitness. Ask him to do push-ups every day. I think that's the number one thing guys can be doing. Get a nice chest. So you need to be that inspiration, that feminine inspiration for him. And then when he feels more stiff, I'm not sure where he's stiff on that. I mean, obviously with ED, he's not stiff where he needs to be. Um, So let's talk about this ED too. And she wanted to know, how did I decide to move on with my older man? She says, if he's got absolutely every other box, you know, how do I give up in case, you know, do I end this before growing any further? Well, let me just tell you my 333 rule, three dates, three weeks, three months. If at three months, he is no longer cute to you. And I say cute to you, like you can look at him and be like, he's cute. I can do this. Like, yeah, you kind of have to pep talk yourself because guess what? Chemistry doesn't last forever. You got to actually like looking at the person you're with. So both sides should be keeping themselves up well, correct? Everyone's shaking their head, yes. Um, so how did I decide to move on with the rich or the old guy that, who was the first guy I dated? Uh, I just knew that he was, uh, he was 20 years older than me and he looked considerably older. He dressed older. He wasn't real hip and stylish, but we did own the room and people did look at us weird. Like I was kind of the, the added on young girl. Um, but I can tell you this, after a year of being with him, I loved his presence in my life. It, he built me back up after a hard divorce. Uh, he cared about me. He cared about my kids. He cared about my mothering. He cared about the deeper stuff and he taught me to to love myself back again. But I knew he wasn't a forever guy. You know when he's not a forever guy. So ask yourself, is he somebody I'd wanna be with forever? That is that simple, so that should answer that question. But let's talk about his ED. Now, I don't know exactly how old this guy is, but believe it or not, I just read this, that 40% of men by the age of 40 have already dealt with ED. And that is the average age when ED starts to come into play for a lot of men. Now, ED is also connected with health issues, Uh, So again, if he's not being healthy with his body, if he's in a high stress situation, blood pressure issues, he's not keeping himself well, ED is, is highly likely to come as a symptom and sometimes a participant in all of his health issues. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But um, it also says 70% of men by the age of 70 will have ED, okay? So this is a common, this is as common as basically menopause. And I'm gonna bring up menopause at the very end because As we get older, we are all dating older, we're becoming older, and I know my menopause is coming, my girlfriends tell me all the time, you're gonna be an emotional wreck, you're gonna gain weight, Uh, and I just think, okay, I hope my husband's ready, but honestly, I need to be ready. So I need to be understanding my health better, my body and how it works, my hormones, and just like that, gentlemen, if you know you're getting to that 40-year-old mark, you're getting to 50s and you're worried about ED, start doing your homework now. Right? There are answers, there are solutions, and there's probably preventative medicines that you can do. Um, so let's talk about these things. And by the way, thank you for sharing all those details. I hope I answered some, some extra questions along the line there. Well, the biggest thing to know, and this is from the ladies when I asked this back on my Instagram, is that first off, sex is not just about penetration, right? So we understand that an ED, he can't basically get it hard. Uh, you can stroke, you can toke, you can midnight choke, whatever. Uh, But it just doesn't get hard, and that's discouraging. It's discouraging for the guy. It can be discouraging for the girl, but it's not always about penetration, guys. And women are creative beings. What else can you be doing? She's like, enjoy me for a little bit. Like, we'll figure this out, right? And I think that's where we go to number two, is that it's solvable. So, guys, let's talk about this, because if it's solvable, maybe fix it. Right, so let's look at the statistics. I asked these guys on my Instagram, men, if you've struggled with ED, would you get help? You know, and 29, I'm sorry, here, um, 29 says, yes, I've asked a doctor already. 51% said I would get help, meaning like if, if they were to get it. And then 20% said, no, I wouldn't. Shame on you 20 percenters. Those must be part of the 80 percenters of people who I think are junk and dating. That is a really immature action. And that's what I think a woman would be more frustrated with. She wouldn't care if you have ED. She gets it. Um, she's, she's not 
you know, she was maybe married to a guy that had it. And now she's dating again. It's not, it's not new out in the market. Uh, it's going to be happening. But what's going to frustrate her more is that you're not doing something about it or about your health or with a doctor and you're lazy. And we women, we love to see effort. So guys, go figure it out. Ask your buddies. Talk to a doctor. Look online. I mean, I remember one time I was in Vegas. Not that you should do this, but they were selling a little blue pill in the women's bathroom. Like, I like this idea. Like, okay, buy it for your man and have a long night, right? That's Isn't that part of the goal here? Like, not only does it get hard, but it stays hard. Um, so I thought that was kind of cute. Uh, I'm not going to tell you about the rest of that night. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So again, it's, it's, there's something, you can fix it. We can, it's sex is bigger than just penetration. And so number three is that if you're trying to do something about that, that is very, very attractive to her. Number four, now if they ignore it, here's the issue is it's a sign of something else. It's uh, an ego issue or he actually already knows and doesn't want to address it. So that is just really unattractive to a woman. That's like a, that's a no-go zone. So we're going to skip on that. Now, I did ask the men um, and the ladies, I asked the ladies this one, if he told you early that he had ED, would you date him? So that's the question is, when do I tell her, Katie? I already know I have ED. I'm doing something about it. You know, when do I tell her? Well, there's a couple options right here. Um, that if you're doing something about it and you know it's working, maybe don't. Maybe maybe enjoy a couple of sessions and then you could share it later if you even need to because maybe you it didn't work one night. Um, so if, if you've solved the problem, run with it. You don't need to tell her everything and maybe six months down the line or once you're super committed, then you bring it up. And she might have a couple of physical health secrets in her closet too. Um, but let's say you are in a moment and it's just not working Yikes, you know, it's going to be a little late for that. And if you are not trying to fix it, you're going to be fish out of water, a little awkward, and she's going to notice. And so that does not make her feel wanted. That does not make her feel competent. It does not make her feel good. So really make sure you're on it. But I asked these ladies, I said, if he told you early that he had ED, would you still date him? So believe it or not, 48% of the women said yes, but 52% of the women said no. So if she knew that you had it, but here's what I'm thinking. You had it and you didn't do anything about it, she's saying no to you, okay? So even though this was split down the middle, if, she, if you have it and you're fixing it and she won't even notice, don't tell her. Just don't tell her. And in reverse, I asked the gentleman, if a woman was going through menopause, it was extremely hormonal. I have different girlfriends who are going through it very differently. Some are crazy hormonal, like, ooh, girl, I can't even handle uh, and then some are just, you know, they're going through life, but, you know, they're just hot. So we, I asked the men, if she told you she was going through menopause, would you date her? And 54% per, of the guys said yes, and 46% said no. But here's the difference, is that I asked the women, if you're struggling through menopause, would you get help? 97% said they would. So you're going to see that women are a little bit more self health advocates more willing to work on it and to feel better about herself and do what needs to be done. Where guys, you get a little quiet about it, but it's a big deal. It's a big deal in relationships and it happens. It's it just happens. Like I have like for example, when I gave birth, things come out of you. And I hated the idea of that, but guess what? It happens. So not to get explicit, but just the idea like let's all get over it and let's move forward and let's make it right. So here's my last caveat to this is that Men with ED, we, we tend to say it's a physical ailment, there's something wrong in your body, but I'm going to also blame pornography. Uh, there's quite a few men who are addicted to pornography. They are, it is so accessible now, which just is, it's the demise of man. And if you follow any masculine males, they will say porn again is one of the huge reasons these men are turning into pansies. Uh, I think I have a whole podcast on like, you know, 12 reasons why men are pansies in dating. Uh, and that's my nice way of saying another word. But this this whole idea of porn, you never even have to interact anymore. You can get it in 3D nowadays. You've got toys that mimic, mimic body parts. It's disgusting. So why would you even need to get a backbone and figure out how to understand a woman, be in relationship with a woman, if all you do is watch porn? And then on top of that, all you use is your hand. And so when your hand is constantly the thing that is making you hard, if you have somebody else's body parts or hands doing it, 
it won't, it won't feel the same. So you've now become accustomed to yourself doing yourself and no longer can you connect with another person because you are now living in unreality land, right? In a false, uh, in a false land of sex. And that is not what people are looking for. I know that my followers, the 20 percenters, are looking for intimate relationships, they're looking for connection, and they're looking to make love with somebody. So if you are stuck on porn, I guarantee you that ED will become an issue for you because it's just, it only makes sense that those two kind of go literally hand in hand. So, well, that is my take on men with ED. Hey guys, just go get the blue pill. Let me know if you have a favorite one. I'm happy to share. Uh, and, it, and remember, even though you look and feel young, you may not in reality. So it's okay to go and tuck and pull. And if you need some advice on that, I'm happy to coach. Don't forget to get in my database. I have female and male clients. I have the best followers in the world. You guys make me so happy. Send this to a friend. Let's not be embarrassed, but let's just do dating better. All right, you guys, cheers until next time.